Hey everybody, this is my 2002 Mercedes C230 Compressor Sport Coupe. It's the W203 with a M111 motor in it. And today I'm working on the uh, coolant system. I'm flushing the, the entire system because, well, it needs it, um, as you'll see in a minute. Uh, but also because I've been having problems with the heater. Um, I'm also leaking coolant. Haven't been able to find out exactly where the coolant is leaking. I don't know if it's leaking through the heater core or where it's going. Um, I bought this car wrecked and it's been a project getting it put back together and this is one of the things that I've been putting off for a long time. Um, now I've gone ahead and drained the radiator. I'll show you how that was done. Um, there's a an easy to reach Pepcock right here, that red valve. You open that up just need a flat screwdriver to get that started and then it should open right up and look at the mess that's drained out of that it looks like tomato soup that's disgusting this has been put off way too long and I strongly suspect that the previous owner did not put in the correct antifreeze I think they just bought all-purpose stuff from AutoZone threw it in there with this you have to use either the Mercedes brand or Xerox G05 except no substitute or you're going to end up looking like this um so the radiator is drained i've removed the coolant reservoir which you see right here it looks just as bad just as you would imagine here now to remove this this is sitting right here there's one bolt right here um of course unhook your hose hoses uh, this is the auxiliary water pump, um, just an electric coolant pump that's going to snap in right there. Then this whole thing will pull off right here. Now, that part at the bottom, it looks like it screws in, but it doesn't. You can just um, pull that out of the, the rubber grommet there. It should come right out. Okay. So, got the reservoir out of the way, and... Um, can see this coolant is way beyond what uh, what it should ever look like so we're gonna get this flushed I've also taken off the uh, thermostat here you can see the thermostat um, this is a, a very easy removal um, just three bolts right there at the top and you know there's there's no excuse on this engine to not replace your thermostat except that i just replaced it a year ago so i know that this one's still in good shape um if in doubt go ahead and replace it because um you know your thermostat goes out you can be replacing an engine so um and it's a 20 dollar part and it takes five minutes to change it out so um now, the reason I took that off is I'm going to be using my uh, liquid evacuator to try and suck out as much of this crud as I can before I start flushing it with clean water. So we'll go on to that step now. Now, if you don't have a fluid evacuation pump, fear not. You can make one for about $8 with parts from Home Depot if you have a um, shop vac, which everybody should have one of these little guys. Get yourself a bucket from Home Depot, a little bit of tubing, so just cut a hole in the top of your bucket. That's going to put suction in the bucket, and it will suck everything through the tubing. And you can use this to um, suck the last little bit of oil out of the oil filter um, can over there when you're doing oil changes. You can suck antifreeze out of things, so it works pretty slick. I'll show you. And keeps all your hazardous materials contained and you never suck any oil into your vacuum. Okay, I've got all the coolant out of the system that I can get on this first round, so uh, before I start the fresh water flush, uh, I'm going to take this in the house and see how much of that crud I can get out of there with a toothbrush and some hot water. We'll see what I can do.
So I've cleaned out the reservoir as best I can. I've reinstalled it. I've closed up the pepcock under the radiator and put the um, thermostat back in place. Refilled the system with water and a little bit of vinegar to hopefully break up any of the uh, um, calcium deposits that might be in there. And mostly the problem that I have is rust and oil. Um, so the system is circulating. You can see it's steaming. It's starting to get warmed up. And as it's circulating through the system, what I'm doing is using my extractor to try and skim off some of the crud right off the top. And this will hopefully mean that I'll have to flush it fewer times by doing this. So I'm just gonna So I'll let this run for a minute and let some of that crud build up on top again and skim it again. Then I'll close up the system and let it get to full pressure and let it run for a few minutes and then drain it and do that a few more times. Okay, so we're wrapping up this project here. I've just got done draining the, uh, the last flush here. So I'm about ready to close the system back up. Uh, I've got my reservoir um, cleaned. It's not very clean, as you can see. It's definitely better than it was, but I really wish I could have got that spotless. But um, but that's, that's as good as that's going to get for now. Um, reservoir is reinstalled. I want to show you, um, I kept samples from each of the flushes, and this is really interesting. This is the initial drain. Now, this is really bad. It should never have gotten this bad. Um, you've got so much debris and rust in there, and yeah, really unfortunate. But um, this is the first flush, water and vinegar. Honestly, I'm not sure the vinegar really does anything. Um, but hey, um, second, second flush, you see the water's a little clearer. This one, actually the water looks a little worse in this flush, and I think that's because I let the motor run longer that time. But this is the real interesting thing. This is the last sample, and you can see how much rust is in this one compared to the initial drain. It's just as bad, if not worse, looking. And this came out, this came out after this one. Now the reason for this is this. And this is uh, something that I ordered off of Amazon. It's Motor Medic Super Heavy Duty Radiator Flush. And, um, you know, I'm always a little skeptical about stuff like this. You never know if it's really going to do what they claim it's going to do. But I gotta say, I'm really impressed with this because to get that much debris out of there, now you come look at the bucket that that sample came from, and it looks like soapy water as it should, but there is so much rust in that water that, um, yeah, that's all come out of that system. If I were to do that three or four times, I'd probably have it looking pretty good. Um, I only have the one bottle, so I'm going to have to call it good for tonight. But uh, I definitely recommend this product if you're doing a radiator flush. Motor Medic Super Heavy Duty Radiator Flush. You, you flush it until your system's running clear. Then you do an additional flush with this. And um, I drove the car hard for about 15 minutes. Came back and let it cool down, drained it. And, um, yeah, I am really impressed with the results. So now um, I'm going to do my 50-50 mix, fill it up, close everything up, and call it good for now. Now, uh, 
This is the first time doing a, a radiator flush on this car. Uh, I may not have done everything by the book. If you've got any recommendations of how people could do things a little bit better, um, go ahead and let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, um, shoot them over to me and see if I can get back to you. But um, yeah, thanks for watching.